Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Today I'm doing a much requested video, but I'm also going to explain why I only have a few recommendations for this one. So, <clears throat> Motorcycle Romance, as you can tell by the title, um, also called MC Romance, so if you don't know what that has meant, it means Motorcycle Club um, or Motorcycle Romance, whatever, um, and it generally involves around a group of probably found family, which, I mean, that is awesome, of bikers. It's usually a dark romance. Um, there can be a lot of trigger warnings involved depending on, but like anything, like with mafia, like with historical, there are varying degrees of how intense that it can be, right? Because that's how it goes. <clears throat> now, for me, something that I've become aware of when testing out different MC romances is that in general, there's a lot of biker culture that goes along with this. This involves there being um, ladies who are called either like sweet butts or club whores or um, patch sluts or old ladies or women being called bitches. I just said a bunch of words in the first minute of my video <laughs> that uh, may make this not super monetizable. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'll never censor myself, but sometimes it hurts the bottom line. And I know that that is just a part of the gist and therefore I don't have any interest in the gist because when I read women being called that I don't find it affectionate and I thought this was kind of funny because one of the books I have on this list 1000% does that but I still really did like the book like I said I have exceptions to every rule but one of my friends just tried to read it and she was like I did not find it affectionate and I was like girl I understand I understand <clears throat> You don't always find it sexy for a woman to be called a bitch and it's supposed to be affectionate. And I don't have anything against anyone who's reading them um, and doesn't have a problem with it because if they're able to suspend their disbelief, I read a lot of books with dubious consent or with, you know, non-consensual things in them and we don't need to play a finger pointers game. But what is important to me is that the book is palpable to me and I can enjoy myself while reading it and not be cringing or be ticking things against the hero every time he calls someone who is a club slut. Um, and, you know, no matter how much our heroine is then not like other girls because now the hero is going to be faithful for her where he wouldn't be for anyone else, I just can never, like put him in a place of like, wow, what a hero, when he will have casual sex with women that he just feels like he deserves it because he's in this club, and then a woman that it's like, oh, don't even look at her sideways because she's mine. I have issues with it. But, okay, this video isn't about me, again, shaming people who like it. I just want to put out there why I have very specific things that I'm looking for at Motorcycle Club. Um, and so when you see my list and I explain each book to you, hopefully that helps you understand why, like, some of the most popular series aren't going to be on my list. Some of the most popular series, I only like a couple books in it. And the few books that are exceptions to this are because I significantly like something else in the story enough that I can overlook it, if that makes sense. So... Let's go with one that I just read recently, um, and I do actually own the first book in this series. I was given it as a gift, but it has the original title, and it has a slur in it, and maybe you know where I'm going with this. Now, the slur is still used in the books, and I know people have opinions about that. Keep them to yourself. Keep them to yourself. I really enjoyed this series, and this series is actually about a ex motorcycle group but they still very much have the found family still have the connection and still go to their club now and then and that is the clifton forge series by devney perry the first book used to be called tin blank and was changed to steel king um, i read that book last year and it wasn't like my favorite one but i grabbed the other audiobooks because the audiobooks were excellent in a audible sale because this series is one of my friends like favorite Devony Perry series and I binged them all in January and I really enjoyed it so yeah this is about the 
um, this X motorcycle club that kind of disbanded just because it wasn't doing good anymore. Um, and there is still some like mysteries going on. And in the first one, our heroine comes to town to find out more about the death of, I think it was her mother. And she meets her father who was the old like president of this club. And currently his son was the president when the club was disbanded. And she's trying to solve this mystery. So this whole series kind of has small um, suspense elements in it. Um, and there is an active motorcycle club that is kind of our, like, villains or antagonists in this series. Like, they're not quite ready to let certain things go <clears throat> that happened in the past. All right, then um, I feel like everyone will know about this series for obvious reasons, but because I only had a few to put in this list, I have to show them, of course. So we have, we have the Fallen Men series by Jana Darling, which is currently on hiatus for we don't know how long. It's been many months now. I would really like Jana Darling to just release the next book, whether or not she has her Facebook access, because I feel like she has a big enough following that people would be buying the book no matter what. This is just my personal thing. Um, conspiracy theory, I think there's something more going on than just that. But that it is devastating to her business that her account was hacked and then she was locked out of it and she's never been able to have her account restored, which does have a significant amount of followers, so I understand that. But I feel like there's other things going on that have kept it because we haven't got caution to the wind, which I really, really want. But there is, um, Welcome to the Dark Side is book two. Um, I recently, well, I guess it was back in like, um, it was last year. I reread, um, the first book, which I just forgot the name of right this second, which is annoying. Um, Lessons in Corruption. And I didn't love it as much upon reread. I found some things... <laughs> problematic. I hate using that word. But I still really love Welcome to the Dark Side. This is an extreme age gap. Um, the main character actually has cancer when she's a child. And our hero, Zeus, had went to jail for a crime. And they are like pen pals while she's a child. And when he gets out, she is almost an adult. And their relationship kind of begins. It's kind of interesting because um, he has kids that are like older than she is. So there's that. And then there is Dead Man Walking, which is book six in the series. And this one is about Priest and Bia. And Bia is actually the heroine in this one's younger sister. And she has this kind of like, I'm a good girl, but I just really like bad boys vibe, which upon reread um, was a little bit ironic um, to read it. But I still have a soft spot in my heart for this one. And the audiobook for this is amazing. Um, and that series doesn't have, like, they use the term old lady, but they don't use as much of the, like, derogatory terms for women as some other ones do. So I enjoyed that one. And then we have a series that I discovered last year because I found the author on TikTok. And this series, the first book, has a lot of that biker, biker culture stuff I talked about. But when the hero falls in love with the heroine, she really calls him out on a lot of that behavior. And it changes throughout the series. Like this club, as the men find their women, they really start to lose that. So I really liked seeing the club like grow a little bit. So I just grabbed the first two, but there's five in this series. So there is Birdie's Biker. And this is the one where none of the men have stable women. There are a couple ladies who are um, club women in this, but they really enjoy it there and they very much feel like a freedom because they're protected by these men and they also like all of them. So they're willing to sleep with them when they need to, um, or are asked to. And I like that. But this one, we have Birdie who her father gets into trouble with some men who try to kill him and try to kidnap her. And so he asks the Royal Bastards MC to protect his daughter. And so Birdie goes to stay with, um, with Loki and his men. And she really kind of shakes up the bike house a lot. 
Then I also grabbed um, Truly's Biker, and this one we have Rock, or Rote, Rock, I don't know how we say his name, who he has PTSD, he was in the army, and one of his friends there died protecting him, and so when he came back, he promised to take care of this man's wife and widow, um, and even though they don't necessarily want his help. And so then there's Truly, though, who is a young girl and has always kind of wanted to be with him, and once she is old enough, she's ready to make her move. Also in this, Rock has a sweet little chihu teacup chihuahua that travels around with him everywhere and I would die for her. Her name is Karen and she's the cutest thing you've ever seen. I love it. So then we have one that I try to talk about whenever I can. This is actually a standalone. So this is really great. This is the Kings of Kearney and um, this is by Navessa Allen and this one is an MC that is made up of veterans and some of them are wounded veterans and um, our heroine is actually a wounded veteran who is a bartender and she's kind of sort of being recruited into this MC and she's not really interested in it. But also our hero, Jacob, he needs her help because she has a grandma who is in an old folks home and there is a drug ring happening in this old folks home and it appears to have been started by a rival um, club because there are some parents from a lot of biker clubs there and that's like a no-no you don't mess with people's parents and grandparents and so he needs her to fake date him um which of course their fake dating actually starts with them having a one night stand which is amazing um so that he can get access to this old folks home to ask some questions um and yeah i really enjoyed this one and i love that they were both wounded veterans I love it. This is probably my favorite MC romance, like, ever. I love it. Then we have the one, like I said, that it breaks all the things that I would normally like to read in an MC romance. And I haven't finished the series. I don't know if I ever will because it is some of the darkest stuff I've ever read. So maybe you guys know where I'm going with this. And I don't know if I can willingly put my mind back there again. So the one I'm talking about is It Ain't Me Babe by Dilly Cole. This is kind of, I feel like, the quintessential MC romance. Like, this is the one that most people have read. It's been around for quite a long time. And the heroine is escaping a cult. All the heroines in this series will, like, escape the cult, basically. Um, and the hero, he is a um, mute president of the club and he had actually met the heroine briefly when they were young and then he finds her when she escapes this cult and he brings her to their club to protect her um and they, this club ends up getting embroiled in a war with this cult this cult includes um molestation of children and rape and just like horrible things happening to these women um and our mc ends up, like we said, like getting involved with this at different times through the series. But there is all of those things I said I don't love. Like there are club whores, we call the women bitches and sluts. Um, and I just, it's tough. But the story in this book, I've read the first four, they are gut wrenching. And if you like the kind of dark romance that like tears your guts out, like the series does it. And so I really was into it for the first few but some of the things that were happening it felt like Tilly Cole was just trying to continually one up herself and I couldn't emotionally take it anymore but I still do recommend It Ain't Me Babe and the first four books in this like they blew my mind I just I couldn't keep going after that but they're there all right then two more one, I actually only have read the first one in the series. I want to read more. I just, I've run out of time because there are audiobooks for most of them, so that's helpful. But there is Charge by Kate C. Wells. This one is a young single mom, and I think Charge, is Charge the president of the MC? I don't even remember. It's been a little bit. But her and her son, um, like, she's trying to keep custody of her son. She had this child, like, very young. Um, and so she herself is still almost a child. Like, she's in her very early 20s. And 
she ends up, I think, living near the hero's dad. Is that what's happening? I don't know. It's been a while since I read this. But they just end up falling for each other. Neither of them is looking for something. She's not looking for someone who can break her heart again. Also, she has a dad and a stepmom who, if she is seen with any unsavory characters, they are ready to try to take her kid from her at any moment. At least her stepmom is. Um, she doesn't think that she can be responsible enough as a young mother and so she really has to be careful who she associates with um, because it could put her parenting at risk and then the last one I want to mention which it was funny this one popped up when I was doing my research because I was like oh yeah this is biker um, it's paranormal bikers by the way but judgment road by Christine Feehan is the first book in her like paranormal biker series um, and so these men they were all experimented on by like Russian scientists that's usually how it goes and now they try to rescue people from human trafficking and from bad situations and they'll go undercover and they're willing to do very dangerous things and use the skills that they have so because yeah they were experimented on they were made into super soldiers that's a pretty big theme in Christine Feehan's books that's usually what happens to the characters and so after they escaped from there um, they formed a biker club um, because they had this found family already with them having these like abilities and a shared past and their biker club is kind of a like what they use to be able to um, rescue ladies or, or rescue people and children and people in bad situations. Now Christine Feehan, I haven't read her in a while. I read the first three in this series and then I kind of fell off. She does some very beautiful, like, sexual healing in her books. Also some super erotic stuff. Like, I think in the first or the second one, the hero, like, writes his name in his cum on the girl's stomach and is like, you're going to leave this here all day. You know, so that kind of, like, possessive stuff. Um, really good things. Right. So... All right, so there you go. I finally made it. I made a motorcycle club romance. These are the only ones that I really enjoy. I have read a few others, but these are the ones that I like enough to recommend. Feel free to turn this comment section into more recommendations. If you've read other ones that you stand by, they don't need to follow what my qualifications are. But if you do have some MC romances that you think follow where there isn't as much of the like, club talk or like club whores or things like that, that'll work. If you can't tell, I very conspicuously don't have an MC series on here that I've read many of the books in it because I just think the culture is so toxic that I can't recommend those books. You might know what I mean. Um, but that's just my personal feeling. That doesn't have to be anybody else's. So, Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this if you'd like to support what I do here. I do have my links down below, including to my merch. I just got in some of the new designs that I had done, um, if you're interested in checking those out. And I will see you next time. Bye.